Hey everyone, I'm Ella from Spline. In today's video, we are going to learn how to use 3D Paths to create cursive 3D text. If you're new to 3D Paths or to Spline, this is a great place to start. It's also worth mentioning that once you have a stronger understanding of 3D Paths, you can start creating things like pipes, cables, or paths for other objects to follow and more. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to change the color of our background so it's easier to work with. And now I'm going to create my reference so you can add an image or a sketch into Spline. I'm actually going to make the reference using the text tool. So I'm gonna drag my text box here. I recommend for this exercise to make your font a lot bigger and also to make your font more of a cursive or like a handwritten style font so quickly i'm just gonna scroll through the different fonts available in spline and the one that i end up picking is this one which is a lot more loopy and it has that kind of cursive style the next thing we want to do is lower the opacity so it's easier to see our own path as we're laying it down and then I'm going to lock the layer to ensure that I don't move or affect the, the reference layer as I'm tracing it. Now we're ready to use the path tool. So the path tool is located in the top toolbar here in the drop down menu. And once this is selected, you can see all of the settings have appeared on the right hand panel. I'm going to make my first stroke and it is way too thick. So we can go into the right hand panel and where it says size, we can lower this down. So if I put two, that is way too thin. So I'm going to put 10. Okay. That's looking a lot better. And when it comes to putting down our points, it doesn't have to be perfect at first. There's no need to add like a ton of points like this. What we want to do is place our points where the lines curve. So more like this. So when we're done placing down all of these points, we can actually use the bend tool to start creating the curves and improve all the details. And now selecting the bend tool right here in the top toolbar, I can start to bend these and form them to better match our reference below. This can take some time, but play around with it and start shaping your word. Now that we have the base structure of our font done, let's increase the subdivision here to 100. This is just gonna smooth out the path even more. And it's important to note too, you can add or remove points on the path at any time to continue to adjust the shape of your design. Here, I'm going to increase the size of our path. I'm going to increase it to about 50, just so it's thicker. That looks pretty good. And you can always double click on your path to start editing it again. Now for the next step, we're going to start making this look a little more 3D by clicking on our points and we're going to start dragging them in the 3D space, giving a little more distance between each point. So all you have to do is click on the point and then use the handles and move them to where you want them in the space. You can also move several points at a time by holding down shift. Great, this is looking a lot more 3D. Now in the right bar, let's make some other adjustments. By default, we have this circle shape, but you can play around and try the other shapes available. So there is rectangle, polygon, star, and even a custom shape. With a custom shape, you can select any vector shape from your scene and then use that as the shape of your 3D path. For this design, I am going to pick polygon and I'm just going to ensure that on sides, the value is set to five. Now let's start applying our materials. To open up the material library in Spline, click on this icon with the four dots. 
The Material Library has a ton of beautiful textures, colors, gradients, all sorts of materials to pick from. The Material Library is fully available to super users, but if you are a free user, there are some materials from the library available to you. Now I'm going to look in the spine library under the category wood because we know I want a wooden texture for this type and there's a lot of different textures to pick from but the one that I am going to use is floor pattern 21 here it is so I'm going to open up this material asset and make some adjustments to the image layer I'm going to change projection to planar Okay, great, that's looking a lot better. So the next thing I wanna do is go into the lighting material layer and see where it says bump maps. You can now select the image that has been applied to this material. Bump maps are great because they use the luminance data, aka those lighter and darker areas from the image that we added to the material of this object to simulate concavity on the surface of our shape. This will create an illusion of depth and detail, making the material look more realistic. If we go back into lighting, you can also increase and decrease the intensity of your bump maps. Totally up to you if you want more of an intense and detailed look to your texture. I'm going to keep it around 5. And now I'm just adjusting the background to better match our wood texture. So I'm going for a nice warmer beige. And I really want to use a background element here, so I'm using a rectangle just to help frame our design better in the scene. So I'm going to make sure this is centered as possible. Okay. So I want this rectangle to match the color of my background, so I'm just going to copy the code from the background color and then paste it onto the color of my rectangle. Perfect, and then to make sure that this really blends into the background, I'm just going to turn off lighting so we don't see any shadows um, or lighting bouncing off our rectangle. And I'm going to add a depth flare, which is right here. So with this depth flare, I'm going to quickly edit the ramp, just make this gradient a little bigger. And I'm going to turn the black color the same as the background. So I just pasted that color code again and adjusting the gradient here. That's looking pretty good. Um, and a quick reminder to always name your layers. So I'm just gonna change this to a background really quickly. BG works, okay, perfect. I think this gradient could be a little more subtle. So I'm just going to quickly edit this again. And I'm going to change the opacity of the white portion of the gradient. So it's a little more subtle. 40 might be a little too much. Let's try 60. Okay, I think that looks really nice. For the ends of our 3D path, right now they're flat, but you can round these. All you have to do is go to the right panel and where it says cap, select round, and now the ends of our 3D path will be rounded. You can adjust this even further by adjusting the corner and the corner size values. Another adjustment we can make to this design to smooth out our 3D path even further is increasing the level of subdivision. So the level of subdivision is going to influence our overall design. I am just going to keep it around 26. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now for the lighting. So you can add more lights to more illuminate your scene if you'd like, but in this case I'm just going to keep the default light, which is the directional light. And you can always select this light and move its position and see how that works for you. You can adjust the intensity or the color. A quick tip on how you can add some soft shadow details to your scene is by enabling ambient shadows. To do this, make sure you don't have anything selected and the option will be available in the right panel. You will notice how these shadows appear in your design and once they do, you can adjust them in the settings by making them more noticeable or more subtle and even adjust the color. Another way to add shadows to your scene is by using the depth layer. And using this technique, you can explore a variety of different textures and words. I also explored using grass, stone, and paper here. 
And let's take this a step further. So let's animate our word and have it come onto the screen as if it's being written. This is really easy to do. All we have to do is adjust the depth value. So to get this animation to start, we have to add a state. So add a state and on base state, let's change the depth value to zero. And then click on state and change the depth value to one. And to trigger this animation, we need to add an event. So here I'm adding an event and clicking on transition and ensure that current is on base state. And now we want to set this to three seconds so it's not as fast and a little more smooth. So now our word writes on to the screen. If you want this to loop, you can set it to infinite and set it to reverse ping pong. And then another event that you can add would be the look at event. I love this event because it's so easy to use. It just ensures that design is always looking at your cursor. So it just adds a nice level of interactivity. All right, that's it. We made it to the end of this tutorial. Now you know how to create beautiful 3D cursive text with detailed textures. And like all spline designs, you can easily embed your 3D scenes into your projects like your websites, your iOS apps, and more. There is a lot you can do with 3D Paths, so make sure to look for more ideas and inspiration in our community. Thanks for watching and follow for more. See you in the next video. Bye.